Welcome back once again to another episode here on Homebuilt Happiness. Today I got something that I'm pretty excited about. And listen, I get excited about a few of the things on here, but this one's really cool. And if you're in an area where it's snowing, it's icy, and you're having a hard time getting to sleep at night, I'm gonna show you something that I think you're gonna fall in love with too. Check it out. Here is a Chinese diesel heater, and I'm gonna show you exactly what you're gonna expect to see when you open up this box, when you order one of these things, what it comes with, and not only am I gonna give you a review, I wanna help you understand how this thing works, how you're gonna install it, and what the results are gonna be like. Let's dive in. And folks, the first thing I do wanna let you know is, is the way this uh, product was packaged the items in it were so rattly that we actually got a um, a damaged condition sticker from USPS. When we received it, it sounded like a bunch of broken glass inside of a like a plastic drum. Um, what that was was actually the gas tank that comes with this. They put a lot of the um, the mounting hardware and like the uh, the nozzle and everything inside of that. If it breaks in the bag, those items just roll around. Now, this item, we have already installed it. I wanted to make sure I gave you the best information, and I didn't want to go through this blindly and mislead folks. But I'm going to show you what you would get inside of this box. Now, when you open the box up, the first thing you're going to see is not this. You've actually got a fuel tank that's going to be in here. And the 10 liter fuel tank will take up this entire footprint. So it's, it's a pretty good size, folks. Just to give you an idea, there's a gallon of water. And I can fit six of those in here, possibly more than that. Now this, this side of the box right here is going to contain your Chinese diesel heater, a fuel pump, and a fuel filter. And once you open it up, you'll see the, the heater will actually be in here. You'll have a pump here, and you'll have a filter in that pocket right there in the corner. This box here is going to contain all of your hardware, so we're talking about everything you're going to need from fuel line to mounting plates, everything. Now we're gonna look in here. There's a couple things you'll see that I have not used, and we'll get into that here in a little bit as far as why I have not used some of these items. In this particular Chinese diesel heater we got off of Amazon, and we'll go ahead and throw the ASIN up on the screen. And if you would just wanna go to amazon.com, you can type that code in, and that's gonna bring you right to the item now you're gonna come with a few items. It's gonna look foreign. I hope to take you through what these things are, what they do, and then we'll go ahead and show you them in action. Number one, you're gonna see that we have our Chinese diesel heater. This is the main component that you're gonna receive. This is what you're buying and this is what you want. Number two is gonna be the fuel tank that comes with it. Number three is gonna be a piece of fuel line, and this fuel line is gonna go from the heater to the fuel pump. And the fuel pump is number four. Number four A is gonna be a rubber sleeve. This is more of a dampener that they include, so when you mount it, you're not gonna hear the clicking of the pump. Number four B is going to be a fuel filter, and that does screw off, so you can actually clean this thing out from time to time if you need to. The one that we got does come apart. Um, it seems to be of good quality. Now number five is going to be the fuel line that comes with this unit, and if you noticed just a moment ago, that fuel line is still in the box, and the reason for that and why I included the, the uh, inner dimensions of this line is that it does not fit. It is much smaller than the line that we actually need. So I went ahead and I measured the uh, inlet and outlet side of the fuel pump. And it measured at 0.2 of an inch. And that was 5.08 millimeters. And that's what I determined the inner diameter of this fuel line to be. I was able to go locally and find it at a small engine shop. 
Number six, you'll see that I have circled, is going to be the fuel nozzle. Um, when you get your fuel tank, whatever tank you choose to utilize, you're going to need to drill a hole and put this in there. It's going to give you the nozzle, a retaining bolt on the, uh, on the front side, and you'll have two O-rings that will come with that. That was one of the items we had jingling around inside of the fuel tank that made the, the post office think that it was damaged. Number seven is a mounting plate. Number eight is going to be an intake and exhaust port. And you'll see those in action here in a moment. Everything else is gonna be basically self-explanatory. You're gonna have uh, installation hardware. You're gonna have a, a control panel or like a computer where you're gonna be able to control the settings from. This unit comes with a keychain, which is actually pretty convenient. I, I like it for how we have ours installed. You've got a wiring harness and you have a muffler. That is another item that we did not use. And the reason we did not use it is I was able to plug one side of it with my hand and blow into the other side. It doesn't really seem to hold pressure. And I was afraid that if I mounted that part underneath the trailer, we would end up getting carbon monoxide trapped underneath the trailer. I did not like that. So I ran the exhaust pipe out to the side of the trailer. If you do want to take this unit apart, that vent that you see right here, you can unscrew that. Once you unscrew that, that lighter colored portion will come off. And here's what you look at whenever you look inside of this unit. You're gonna see this black panel that's going to be your control box. And then you've also got your glow plug, which has this red, um, this red rubber grommet around it. And this is basically what you're going to look at if you take it apart. This is going to show you your motor, your fan, all of your gaskets, your intake and exhaust side, as well as the case. I don't know about you folks, but I was really fascinated with how this unit operated. So if you look online, you can find a lot of kind of schematics and little diagrams, things like this that just point out what those internals do and how they operate. Now we're going to show you how to basically install this unit into your RV, schoolie, off-grid home, camper, whatever you need to do, we're going to show you. The first thing I want to do is take you back to that mounting bracket and that's going to be number seven on the diagram that we were looking at. This heater unit is going to mount to that. That's the first thing you want to do is get that mounted up. There's a rubber seal in there that's going to seal that to that grommet. That plate is what you're actually going to be mounting to your unit wherever you're installing this at. Now here's our unit. I just have it installed underneath the bed onto the floor of our cargo trailer conversion. Now if you look down here, you will see that plate. That plate simply screwed into the floor. And then you've got your wiring harness back here. And it's very simple, folks. All you gotta do is plug one end right here into your heater pump. The other end is gonna plug in to your fuel pump. And then you've got a line that's going to go to your control panel and one that's going to run to your battery. This is one area that might be ill-advised by folks that are in the diesel heater community. And I wouldn't blame them, but what I did is I just simply used a 16 gauge wire. Now this is 16 2 stranded. It's basically just an extension cord that I got um, 12 feet and I ran it from that harness and what I did was run it just simply up to our battery. And you'll see that I just have it hooked to some alligator clips. And folks, the reason I have it ran to these alligator clips is because I don't want it permanently installed. Now I know I have the pump permanently installed into the floor, but this unit's gonna run maybe three to six months out of the year. I don't want permanent wiring and I don't want a huge fuel tank mounted to the outside of our rig for half of the year when it's not going to be in use. So I have it set up where I can just simply alligator clip it in place and then I can unhook this harness once the weather gets to a point to where we don't need the heater anymore. Now once you get this heater mounted to the plate, you're going to need to cut a hole in the floor. Now I'll show you what I did to begin with. I took a two and a quarter inch hole saw 
and I just cut two holes, one for the intake, one for the exhaust. And as you can see here, when I shot it with a gun, I was getting over 150 degrees to the plywood, and at the actual exhaust port, I was getting temps over 425 degrees. I did not want that to happen. So what I did was I went back, I used that same hole saw, I simply just cut out a series of holes till I was able to come in to about a half inch of the diameter of the mounting plate. And what some people have done, and I think this is a fantastic idea, unfortunately I lack the tools to do this where I'm at currently full time in the cargo trailer conversion, but if you have access to some hardy board or just some like cement fiberglass backer board, you can cut out a like a 12 by 12 square of that, cut your holes out in that, mount your heater to it, and then you can just cut like a 10 by 10 square out of your floor and mount that hardy board directly to the floor. And that would be in an application where you have a wood floor like we have. Obviously, if you're in a, a mobile application like a van or somewhere like a workshop where you don't have those same obstacles as we have, you can simply just mount it right to the floor and be done with it. Once we go outside, you'll see the exhaust port, and that's just coming right out the side of our trailer. And this is where I cut that hole out in the floor. We mounted the plate directly to that. What you're gonna see right here is the uh, intake side. This, I believe, is a filter, and I don't think it's a very good one because it just leaves just a lot of As you can see, it's just a round piece of foam that goes into here, and this goes over it. I don't think this functions as a very good air filter, but if you wanted to throw like a piece of cloth or even like an old sock around this that you've drenched in like some sort of light oil, I think it would work as a lot better filter and it should not give you a ton of restriction. And here's the exhaust that we have right here. You do come with hardware. You could get some larger band clamps for this, but we just used what came with the unit. Here's your fuel pump, fuel filter, and then you'll see that we just mounted to a one gallon tank. And the reason for that is we do not want something permanent. And I don't have a problem with coming out here once a day and filling this up. So we keep one gallon of fuel, and this is just temporarily mounted. So whenever we go on the road or this unit is not in use, I'll slip this line off the pump. We'll simply put a, a little tab on the, on the end of it so the dirt doesn't get up in there. And then this will be ready to go for the next year. We can just place the can and everything into storage. One thing I will point out is this is the line that goes from the heater pump side down to your fuel pump. This is the sound deadening uh, rubber mount that I was talking about. And then you'll see this is the wire from that fuel pump and it slips right through here. There's an area in that mounting plate for it. We've looked at all of these under high load where there is a lot of heat here and we do not see this fuel line heating up whatsoever. It's actually been really solid, and if we use this unit on the lowest setting, we're using about a quarter gallon of diesel fuel per day. And on the lowest setting, we are able to maintain about 77 to 79 degrees in the cargo trailer. I want to see what this thing's going to do. Let's go ahead and crank it on. I'm going to kick on a timer so we can see exactly how long it takes for the glow plugs to heat up and get this unit running. We're gonna run it on high. I'm gonna give you some temperature data, what's going on outside, what's going on in this trailer. We'll see how long it takes to get this trailer to jump up to 80 degrees. Where we're at currently, folks, is 47 degrees Fahrenheit. We have a 15% chance of rain, 54% humidity. On our control panel, we're recording 68 degrees Fahrenheit on the on the bottom of this trailer. On top, we're recording 70 degrees, and I'm recording 63 degrees at the outlet side. 
we're gonna go ahead and start this unit and we're gonna turn the temp all the way up as high as it'll go and we're gonna go ahead and start our timer the information that you're going to get on the control panel is going to be voltage. Now we start off at 12.9 volts. As the glow plug heats up, this voltage number is going to drop. So now we're currently at about 11 volts while it starts up. You'll see a little red icon right there of a plug inside the heater pump. That's letting us know the glow plug is on. The green icon to the bottom left side lets us know that our fuel pump is activated. And then at the bottom, those arrows back and forth are letting us know that the fan is on, intake and exhaust are functioning, and we've got battery power up in the top right. glow plug is off at 2 minutes and 28 seconds. I know you can hear that fan kick up as we're doing this. We're currently starting at 78 degrees and you can see that number is going up as we shoot it. This is a great time to go through these settings. So right now we're showing 12.3 volts. Our temperature is raising right now. If we press the OK button, it's going to show us our elevation based on barometric pressure, any error codes that were stored. This is letting us know what time it is. This lets us know what degree it is in the trailer right now, what degree I have the unit set to. Now if we go up here to our settings, this will let us change our time. This 1OF is a start timer. I can choose to turn this on at a specific time if I want to, or, or 2OF allows me to set a stop timer. And this is useful when I'm sleeping in the middle of the night. If I don't want to have to wake back up to turn this unit off, or if I'm afraid it's going to get too hot in here, we turn that timer to the on position. Press OK, and it's going to allow us to set a timer. So for example, what I'm going to do is set this timer to 30 minutes, and it will be set to turn off at 30 minutes. The power button obviously turns it off, and then your up and down arrows will set the temperature accordingly. Now also with this machine, a lot of these heaters, some do not have a thermostat like this. You have to go based on a Hertz rating or a pump rating. If you press OK and the up arrow, it will take you to that setting. And then you can change that, that pump rating and that fan rating. Durf, do you like Chinese diesel heaters? He says that I have a fur coat. Says I fully endorse the heater. Hey, Laren. Hi. <laughs> At this moment, we're going on four minutes past the glow plug actually started. Let's see where we're at now. We're shooting 180, 100 and 192 degrees right now and as you can hear we're talking about a lot of air this thing does not skimp we're gonna grab one of Durf's little costumes here and just show you how much this fans blowing this thing really has a lot of air pressure one thing I did want to show is that we're sitting at about six and a half minutes on the pump right now and this is the sound that you're gonna get out, and this is unmuffled.
And as you can see, it can get pretty hot right here. This is the clicking that you hear from people talking about the pump. Hey folks, we're at 11 and a half minutes right now. We're currently shooting over 200 right now at the outlet. On this box, we're shooting 87.5. 75 on the floor kitchen cabinet 85 up top right next to the fan we're shooting 79 degrees so what do you think it's hot is today groundhog day yes is that and hedgehog day happy groundhog day we got six more weeks of winter and guess what if you want to stay warm for them this is your ticket right here, folks. Check out that Chinese diesel heater. Now let's go ahead and shut this thing down because, folks, I need a haircut. I'm not trying to take this thing off, but it is getting hot in here. Yep. Your display on the control panel. This unit is going to go ahead and lower the fans. It's going to go through a shutdown sequence. It takes about five minutes. And the reason it does this is because of the control computer that is inside of that heater. If it does not have cool air blowing on it, this heat's going to go ahead and burn that control panel out. You do not want to do that. So do not just disconnect power from these units. They must go through a five minute shutdown sequence. And that's based on a temperature sensor inside and it'll shut it off around five minutes or when it sees that it is cool enough. And we're currently at 81 degrees. We've jumped two degrees in the last couple moments. So I guess now's the moment of truth, folks. Do I think the Chinese diesel heater is a great buy? For $160, I think it's a phenomenal buy if you're living off grid or you're in a situation where you really have to have some good, efficient, quick heat. You really can't beat this thing. It is the most efficient heater I've ever seen in my life. However, there's always a caveat and you folks know that I'm always going to fill you in on the cons of it. I have not experienced any issues with this heater whatsoever. I installed it, I gave it fuel, I turned it on. Everything was working just fine. However, in the forums, folks do have issues. They have issues with sooting up, they have issues with glow plugs, temperature sensors, there's a lot of problems. So should you go ahead and get that protection plan? Maybe. It might be worth it. And you might want to seek out some of those spare parts items like computer main boards, glow plugs, and the like. From what I understand, these things can get a little troublesome after a while. But for us and the Home Built Happiness crew, it's been a great heater. It keeps us nice and toasty at night. Even when we have snow on the trailer, we can run this thing on the lowest setting. It keeps us nice and comfy. And if you're thinking about buying one, folks, I wouldn't hesitate, not one bit. And if you've gotten something from this video, I'm not gonna ask you for money. I'm not gonna ask you to tell your friends, but I would ask that you just go ahead like the video and subscribe to the channel that lets YouTube know that we're actually doing something good and we're bringing you the best content that we can if you want to connect to us homebuilthappiness at gmail.com those items are up in the description we'll talk to you next time bye